This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Stander, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Stander.com. Welcome to Boomerology Revealed. I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host. On this episode, we ask the guys what they think about their boomer lives. And you're going to see they have a very different take than the girls we interview on episode one. I also have a cool gadget to show you so you can carry in your car, a list of food documentaries, and a lot more. Take a watch. Hi, this is Shahar, Boomerology Revealed. And today I'm with the guys. I'm surrounded by guys. This is a girl's dream come true. <laughs> I will let you introduce yourself, guys. So let's start here. David Becky. Yes, and what do you do in life? Well, I re retired in 2000, and that got boring really quick. So I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, but I also volunteer with SCORE. I do a lot of uh, counseling of small businesses, and I also teach social media. So uh, I'm actually busier than before I retired. And my name is Rick Town, and I'm an account executive with Alpha Graphics. And I'm also an ambassador with the Murray Chamber of Commerce and involved with the Sugar House Chamber of Commerce. I'm Scott Romick and I'm with uh, Nationwide Insurance. But the most interesting thing I'm doing right now is training for the Remax World Long Drive Championships coming up here in a few months. Hi, my name's Steve Belanger and I own uh, JT's Marketing and Promotional Products. And, uh, looking forward to this discussion today. Nice. You know, boomers have been called the me generation, the crazy ones, the prophets, many things, right? But my question to you is, are you guys proud of being a boomer or not? Of course. Well, yeah. Yeah? Proud of being the crazy ones. The crazy <laughs> ones. <laughs> proud that we're still here. Yeah. I, yeah I'm, I'm proud to be a boomer on this side of the grass. Oh, uh -huh, that's very true. <laughs> that's, uh, many are not so fortunate. <laughs> Do you think we are aging, the, the boomers want to be younger all their lives? What, what's your take on that? Or are we just trying to be healthier as long as possible? Yeah, personally, I'm going kicking and screaming. I'm trying right? to do everything I can to stay as healthy as I can and, and to keep being active and keep learning, taking some of these continuing education classes, mm -hmm. and, um, really just fighting it every step of the way. Aging, it's a surprise to me because I'm still feeling like I'm a 17 year old kid mm -hmm. and whenever I walk into the bathroom and see this old man in there, it scares the heck out of me. Yeah. Yeah. We don't feel mm -hmm. our age. That, that's the commonality no, with don't. this generation, right? And I don't, I don't see age until I look in the mirror. Uh -huh. and then I'm like, okay. It's a scary thing. Hair's yeah. gone, <laughs> hair's turned different colors. And then it, it's... And they grow out of your ears and your nose and your... <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much does it really bother you guys? There's times when you think about it, and then you think about there's actually mortality. And then you start doing the numbers, and it's like, hey, you know, grandpa's already gone, my dad's already gone, and I'm still here. So, <laughs> well, you know. for someone that's actually had the so called death sentence, I mean, I've been given 12 months ago, six, six years ago, and three times I ran away from the Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper, but just getting up in the morning makes you more grateful. You have a whole different look on life. Mm -hmm. You really do. And I think that uh, even though we are aware that that gruesome day you know, will someday come, um, we're living more like it's not. I think positive attitudes are, in, for the most part, larger than they once were. Mm -hmm. I wish I had that perspective, and I think probably some of your experiences have brought you to that. I'm, I'm almost looking at this thing going, gosh, if the average age is, what, 78 for a male, you know, I've, I've got less than 30 years left to, you know, i got got 100 years worth of stuff to do. And so, well, I, you know, you start feeling like you've really got to start moving really fast. I've scheduled appointments for 2052 just to make sure I've got a reason to be around. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steve? You know, I, um, I'm just trying to, uh, focus on uh, doing healthy lifestyle things and uh, my dad's uh, into his 80s right now and he's living a good lifestyle so uh, I'm just hoping for the best for me and uh, my <laughs> wife and family so mm -hmm. looking forward to maybe enjoying uh, some grandchildren hopefully in the near future. So. That's good, that's fantastic. You know I think 
Yeah, I, I think, Scott, the good side is we are actually supposed to leave way beyond our 90s. Okay, well, so if you do have a The demographic shows yes. that there are more centenarians yes. nowadays than there ever have. That's yeah. great. That's yeah, great. And, and so I, there's hope. Yeah, so, well, no, I mean, you just start thinking, okay, what have I done so far? And, you know, how much more did I plan on doing? But at the same time, you could be going down a highway and somebody crosses those yellow lines. Absolutely. Yes, and, you know, sir, and it's yeah. all over. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think we all share this. Oh, what am I going to do this next <coughs> phase? We we understand we are in the winter of our lives, but I think as boomers we are going to make this a very fun winter. Yeah. Besides health, what are the challenges that you think you face or people face when they are in this phase of their lives? And I think we talked before about something. We did. Yeah. Uh, about age discrimination when you're with a company like I was for quite a long time, and you worked your way up the ladder. And then the economy drives the vision of the company and they downsize or um, relocate different things. You find yourself out in the workplace uh, market that you weren't prepared for. It wasn't in your plan. And then your competition is the young kids with all the degrees coming out of college with no experience. And that seem to mean more nowadays than somebody that's actually done the job and has been successful with the job and has the experience with the job. So that gets, that was really frustrating, yeah. Now, now Dave, you were with SCORE and you help a lot of business get, get started. Is this what you see? What, what's your thing? Well, as far as seniors or boomers are concerned, there's actually a new program that's sponsored by the Small Business Administration that helps fund and work with small businesses started by people over 50. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because of the great interest in that, maybe because of situations like you've run into, but the, the demographics of new business owners is aging along with us. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly enough, the percentage of those that are successful are greater mostly because of the background and the experience they've had over the years, rather than some 20-year-old with an idea. And some of the time, sometimes those explode and are, they're real successful too, but, mm -hmm. but the general trend is that the, the older, Worst new thing. entrepreneur Over. is more successful. Interesting. What about you guys? What do you think about this? Or have you experienced at all? Yeah, the kind of jobs that I've looked for when I've had to change jobs have, haven't lent itself quite so much to uh, an age discrimination situation. You notice it, um, you know it's there, and, and you want to you wanna just, hey, you know, I understand it's frustrating for the younger people because they don't have the experience and they say, hey, I've got all this education, give me a job, give me a chance, how am I supposed to get experience? And at the same time, you know, yeah, maybe we haven't gotten the latest uh, and greatest in the in the education department or what's just coming out, but we're adaptable. We've had the experiences, mm -hmm. you know, so we understand what it takes to learn something new. I see. And Steve, you have been an entrepreneur most of your life, right? Or have yes. you ever faced? Do you hire people any age or how is it? I hire people now based Now he's in the hot spot. <laughs> <laughs> I hire people based on talent and what the right position is for the, uh, you know, the right position and the right person in that position that I feel is going to help grow the company. I'm just looking for the best person for that best particular position. Okay. You know, it's interesting because you talked about the young ones coming. Um, we, we know, we tell, we say millennials have a sense of entitlement, but we, on the other hand, we are called the me generation, a very self-centered generation. Do you agree with that or do you disagree? Are you self-centered? I, I, I don't I am, know. I think, um, boy, that stuff. I don't know that, and this is going to sound, but I don't know if I am in particularly, but I think that we're short-sighted. Um, I think we're short-sighted in how we've dealt with our environment, um, how we're letting things go in politics, how we're, you know, as a country going so far in debt. Um, and some of those decisions aren't really at us, but they're influenced by how we spend our money. And I think. You know, I think we have had some <coughs> impact and had it been positive. Positive, yes, I agree with you. Well, you know, I think the important thing to keep in mind is, is uh, you know, doing our best and, and um, 
you know, there's a huge community amongst us and uh, sometimes thinking outside yourself uh, and uh, being part of the community and, and doing what you can, making decisions uh, in... So would you say more self-conscious than self-centered? Yeah, I, I think uh, as we age and our responsibilities with children change and, and things of that nature and we start having uh, free time, we start deciding what are you going to do with that free time. And, and you, so you start looking at things, uh, where can I give back and, and how can I participate. And well, so. Harvard did a study several years ago where they followed the lives of several people from childhood through adulthood and followed their careers and a number of them were highly successful at the end of, or near the end of their lives as they were getting older. Every single one of them said that what was most important to them was their relationships with their loved ones. So we work really hard. I think, I think the me generation, no different than any other, as we mature, we realize it's not all about me. You know, it's good that you said that because in the, in the book, The Fourth Turning, they actually say that the, the boomers, they were the crazy ones, right? So at the Absolutely. beginning of our lives, we were crazy <laughs> and we, we did things that we wouldn't be comfortable saying on camera, right? But now, on our winter, we are really worried about the legacy that we are going to, to live. And that's when we think, okay, what's really important, important and what really matters. With this new generation coming up, it's interesting because at the beginning, yes, you know, people over 50 were being laid off and the new young ones were being hired and that, that kind of switched a little bit because it's very difficult to deal with them. And why? Because they haven't not only had the experience, like you said, but also they, don't, they haven't learned how to fail yet, right? Yeah. They, they live in a different kind of school system and there is no failing. And if there is no failing, you cannot create leaders that don't fail. Do you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, talking a little bit about health, uh, you just went through a challenging time of sure. your own. Have you talked to your family about this? Okay, kids, someday I'm going to transition. Have you, have you had, you know, frank conversations or are you still avoiding I, that? I, I never talk about the transition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of my favorite topics. Uh -huh. um, and we, we, we talk about our, you know, how volatile we are health-wise and the things to watch out for. In fact, my wife is a huge health fanatic. You know, she tries to stuff greens down me for breakfast. <laughs> but, um, and she's successful much of the time. But, uh, no, I mean, yeah, I don't like, I, I like to dwell on things that are positive and, and moving forward. And if I die never realizing that the death was coming, then I'm good. Okay, good. And do you, do you guys still have parents alive? Yes. You do? Do you? Yeah, my mother. I have my mother too. My you, mother. you do you? No, no. no. Uh, do you guys talk about these topics oh, sure, sure. with them? Yes, we, they've initiated the conversation. They did? But I think as a child, you don't want to think uh, of your parents' demise, but uh, they've initiated the conversations and told us what their wishes are and how they want to be taken care of if, if uh, for some reason they, they lose some faculties. But, um, you know, it's something we've done informally with our kids, but, you know, my kids are still fairly young, so um, we're... Uh, How old are your kids? Uh, 19 and 24, so... Okay. So, not too much talk in that arena yet. Yeah, they're, they're into their own lives at this point, yeah. and, you know, I don't want to weigh them down with some... Tough some talk. negative things, yeah. you know, the <laughs> tough talk. <laughs> So anyway, my father passed away about 10 years ago, and um, you know I, I think she's probably communicating this stuff with my sister. But with me, you know, it's funny how your conversations with your with your parents, and I can kind of see it with my friends now too. The conversations change a little bit from the price of gas and how's the weather to, yeah, did you hear about so and so? They've got this, or I've been to the doctor, and you know, and it's more. A, there are more conversations about her health now than probably anything else that we're talking about uh, with regards to what's going on in her life. Okay. Uh, so she's having to make adapt, uh, adaptations to, you know, what she does, what she eats, you know, when she does things. Um, but I hear that with, with some of my friends as well, you know. 
I tried to talk to my mother. She diverts the conversation every single time. <laughs> what about you? We've kind of talked about it. My daughter's 24. Uh, what concerns us is the fact that she's an only child. Mm -hmm. And so if something happens to her mom or myself, <clears throat> then I'm always thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think my wife does too. But we've got things in place, but it's like if I don't have to think, if I don't think about it, then I don't have to mm -hmm. acknowledge that it's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, not to be a downer, I just <laughs> keep yeah. on going. But as far as my mom goes, her, her health is so poor that every conversation that you have with her revolves around that. So then you kind of like, all right, so we're we're all prepared, you know, and, and but it's it uh, sometimes it gets a little annoying yeah. because then then you think about yourself too. So, okay, you don't want to think about your parents going because then that elevates you to the next step. Put you on the line. Yeah, yeah, we and have. I ahead. have the opposite problem of you. I actually have six of my own children, and I've been I'm a slow learner. Married three times, so I have a lot of stepkids that count up to 11. Uh, boy. Fortunately, most of them are older, but I'm a slow learner, so I have a 39-year-old on down to a 14-year-old. So we still have a couple at home, and I'm 61 years. years old. We've been so doggone busy, just put that away and sit down and, you know, sure. that we, we really haven't had a chance to sit down and say, Dad's going to die someday. And, yeah, and yeah it, 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 is, it is very tough. I mean, it's a tough conversation to have, and many times they are not prepared. Yeah. But this is important conversations to have, and we want to go deeper in each one of them. I think you can now see a glimpse of what goes on in our life from a different perspective than the girls, right? But everybody excited? No, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very much for being here. See you next time. Here's my healthy tip for you today. No die food. You know, I have been overweight most, most of my life, but actually I was a lot heavier than I am right now. In the last two years, I've lost around 50 pounds. And due to one thing, I educated myself about food. You don't know what you don't know. That's a fact of life. And I really didn't know about what we are eating and what was in there. I thought that if I'm eating this in a restaurant uh, and it's broccoli, it's okay. Never question that you have a ton of butter in there or vegetable fat or, not, or other things. So I didn't know enough about food. I thought I knew. But I found out that I don't even knew exactly what processed food really is and the damage that it does to our body. And the way I educated myself was actually watching some documentaries. There is a plethora of stuff out there for you to educate yourself about food, and it's never too late. It doesn't matter that you have been drinking soda for 50 years. You can stop because that has a negative impact in your, in your life. You know, I watch Netflix quite a bit, and this list comes from there, and I have seen every single one of these docs, and I really, really suggest you get a pen and a paper and write that down because they will enlighten you beyond measure. It's really cool, and it's a good entertainment as well. One of my favorites is Food Matters, a really great documentary with a lot of experts. And you know what? You don't even have to agree with everything. Just educate yourself. It's like going to school. You don't always agree with what's told. Another one, Fork Over Knives, very good documentary. You should watch that. So Food Matters, Fork Over Knives. Another one, Food Inc. Talk about farms and things like that. Food Fight. Super Size Me, this is a very, very popular one. You know how a guy just eating McDonald's for over 30 days, how much he gained in weight? You should look at that. Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead is about a guy also that found out about juicing and how that has transformed his life. The Future of Food, Eating Well for Optimal Health, Food Beware, The Meaning of Food, The Gerson Miracle, that's a very interesting concept for you to take a look, Our Daily Bread, Food beware, I said that once, and beautiful truth and dirt. You know, these are documentaries that talk about food. Some of them talk about the farm system, the system that we have here in America, what we have to do, community gardens. It really gives a 360 view about the food you're eating right now. And it's a good thing to educate yourself. It just will make everything better. So, you know, get yourself an account on Netflix and start watching documentaries about food. You're going to see that it's very helpful. I spend a lot of time in my car. You know, we travel a lot with the Boomer Mobile and I also go out for wildlife photography. So that means getting in and out of the car all the time, maybe hundreds of times a day. 
So I love gadgets and I went looking for something that would help me out. And here it is, the Metro Car Handle Plus from Standard.com. Very nifty tool, let me show you how it works. All you have to do when you're getting out of the car is put the Metro Car Handle Plus on your latch at the door. Very simple, fits all models, no modification required. And you see, it gives you leverage when you're getting out or in the car. It's perfect if you're facing balance issues or maybe a bad knee. Now, the Metro Car Handle Plus holds up to 500 pounds, but of course, it's not supposed for you to put all your weight here, just to help you balance. And it has some more neat features. One of them is a cool flashlight that you can use when you're going out at night or maybe you, you lost something in the car. You can just go with that or put some place in your car and be ready for when you come back. If you find yourself in a difficult situation, for example, you're locked inside the car, fell into a river or something, we don't want that to happen. But if it does, you can use this to break the window and get out of the car. So very cool tool, very affordable, Metro Car Handle Plus from Standard.com. Go get yours. Boomerology Review TV is made possible by people like you. So don't forget to share, share more than once, share everywhere. Like, comment, leave your questions and the things that matter for boomers that you think would be good topics for this show. And for more episodes, don't forget to visit boomerologyreviewed.com. See you next time. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.